Welcome back to Area Diesel Service. So today is another exciting day here at the shop. Several months ago, during our 5,000 subscriber giveaway, we mentioned that we were rapidly approaching our 500,000th turbocharger sale or service. The projection puts us on pace to sell our 500,000th turbo early in 2023. Let it be known, mark it on the permanent record, the 500,000th turbo, as best we can tell, will go out the door free of charge. Stay tuned for that. When it happens, we'll document it and we'll bring you back. This in front of us today is the 500,000th unit that Area Diesel is going to provide to the market. I'm pretty pleased with the way that this thing came about. This turbo is a 4LHR, circa mid-1980s. This is fit to a big cam Cummins or an 855 Cummins. This particular turbo displaces ST and VT50s. One of the major reasons that Area Diesel Service developed our turbocharger business there was a lot of these in service in that era. We displaced a lot of ST and VT50s and upgraded to the Borg Warner or what was at that point Switzer 4LHR. On top of that, the customer that brought this in is kind of a legend around area diesel service. Hopefully when we get this turbocharger tuned up, we can convince Red to get on camera and kind of tell you some of his story. Red has been an area diesel customer for probably all of the 50 years that we've been in business. He is a local legend for being the man on mechanical Cummins engines. Specifically in that era, mid 80s, he was in his prime. As promised, this one's gonna go to red free of charge. I don't know if we're gonna give you the detailed follow along as we repair this turbo, but we'll give you some of it. The story is uh, red had an engine problem, something went through the engine foreign object damage, so they've had the cylinder head off, they've inspected the bore and the piston, minor damage, the only concern with the turbo, turbo feels pretty good, but they're concerned about foreign object damage on the turbine side. We'll run it through the gamut, tear it apart, clean it up, inspect and develop a game plan from there. Hopefully when we meet back at the counter up here, we got Red with us, so we'll be back directly. So we've got Red's Turbo back in the Turbo department. They have disassembled and done a preliminary inspection. The report back to me was that everything looked pretty darn good. The primary complaint or request was inspect for foreign object damage. So the exhaust gas coming out of the engine is first introduced to the turbine wheel on what we call the tip or the inducer fin, right? Exhaust operates right here on this surface to turn the turbine. And there is no evidence of any foreign object damage on this turbine wheel. We've got a couple blades that got just a little bitty wobble in them, but again, that does not appear to be foreign object damage. The shaft and the bearing areas look fantastic. Looks a little gnarly down in here, but that's really pretty normal, right? There's some schmoo, but you're gonna have some schmoo there. The only thing that really showed up, looks like we could have had a potential bearing issue or pressure differential issue. I don't know if it picks it up on camera, but there's just a little step right there where the snap ring started to eat into the side of the bearing. So there shouldn't really be any, any load in that fashion on that bearing. Maybe something going on there. Definitely something that we can fix with the rebuild. Thrust washer, just a little bit. You really can't even you can't even feel it, but you can very faintly see just a little bit of wear there. OD of the journal bearings, ID of the journal bearings. They look fantastic. They look brand new, essentially. Thrust plate, thrust bearing. Also, 
looks fantastic. Everything checks out pretty good. Compressor wheel also looks great. The uh, bore in the bearing housing looks fantastic. It'll clean up no problem. And then the end housings, turbine housing, compressor housing, again, there's really no wear areas there, but they look fantastic. They'll clean up no problem. We'll let the professionals back here do their thing, get this stuff cleaned up, machined back to specification. We'll grab an overhaul kit off of the shelf. These boys will put this thing back together. We'll holler back at Red and we will present the 500 thousandth turbo back to Red. We'll keep you updated. So we're back in the turbo shop for part two, right? We didn't take you along for all of the processes here, but we have cleaned up all of these components. We've thoroughly inspected them to ensure that they're good for another cycle of life. We've done some machining on them to restore them to factory specifications. We've acquired some components so we can put this thing back together and it's time. The hard part is over, reassembly is upon us. Briefly, what we did here, these are the end housings. So turbine housing and compressor housing. You can see now they look much more presentable, right? So these have been baked and blasted, cleaned up and inspected compressor wheel cleaned and inspected rebalanced to ensure that it's going to be good to go again turbine wheel again this was the component that they were most concerned about looking for foreign object damage on the tip and there is none this wheel's in fantastic condition grind and polish the journal bearing area tune up the seal area where the piston seal piston ring goes and then rebalance so you can see fresh balance marks on this turbine wheel make sure this thing's backed into balanced specification cleaned up the rest of the smalls again we've got a new repair kit uh, to put the wear items back in this thing and last thing is the bearing housing so again cleaned up much more presentable and then on the bearing surfaces here hone and polish make sure that that's ready to go. So that's most of what happened here. So the experts are gonna slap this thing back together, give it a final once over. We're gonna get Red on the phone, see if we can get him here. We'll get some balloons or snacks or something, and we will present the 500,000th turbo to Red. We'll bring you back for the next step. The time has come. I called Red this morning. Originally, Red wanted us to ship this turbo to him. He's about an hour and a half away. I had to call Red and try and convince him to come up here and get this so we could present all of this stuff. Red's pretty wise old boy. He smells a rat, okay? I told him I needed him to come pick it up and I needed him to not ask why I needed him to come pick it up. So in true Red fashion, he said, okay, I'll be on my way. He didn't ask, but he smells a rat. We've got the whole spiel spread out here. So 500,000 turbos sold. We got some balloons. We've got a little presentation here. This thing was in mint condition, right? So we went through a little bit of the rebuild process. We felt a little underwhelming to present such a minor repair for such a prestigious milestone. We sweetened the pot a little bit. We've got a, a $500 gift certificate for Red to go along with this. Red is on his way. We are set and staged. We've got about 10 minutes before Red shows up. We're gonna have this live in action when Red comes through the door. I don't know how old Red is. I don't know that anybody knows how old Red is. We're probably going to ease into this. We thought about blasting him with some confetti or something, but I want to make sure that, that he lives through the presentation. We're set up, and we'll bring you back when Red gets here. All right. Red just pulled in, and he's walking up to the door right now, so we're about to find out how this is going to go. He hasn't seen the balloons yet. Stop. Up. Oh. Oh. 
How's it going? Pretty good. So we got a little a little secret we've been keeping here. Your 4LHR was number 500,000. Boy, I brought that at the right time. Yeah, you struck, you struck gold. This thing was in such good condition, we kind of felt guilty, like we were scrimping on this big milestone achievement. We tried to sweeten the pot. Of course, we got all kinds of hats and hoodies, but we also sweetened the pot with a $500 gift certificate. So I won't have that long, but you'll get that. Well, conveniently, there's a pump right over there that thousand dollars so. oh yeah I didn't have to take care of that yeah. well I'll be there major award and you know this one yeah I bought a whole bunch of these what was what was the run there when these were hot it was I know I bought 60 of them in 60 days when I first started Val thought I was God's gift to foil a <laughs> yeah. yeah but they were very very good back then I mean they made one heck of a difference Saw the build date on the back of the wheel was 2019 or something, so it, it wasn't super old. No, it's only got 30,000 miles on it. Yeah. And then it, then the piston messed up. And there was no no sign of foreign object. Anymore. The old boy she's running on is getting seven miles a gallon. Does he have it turned up a little bit? The motor? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Does he All this conglomeration. 500. Boy, if I'd have known that. I brought the chief. Or you'd have bought something for a yeah. KTA 1100 or a, Yeah, that'd have been all right. Yeah, he'd have picked out a $5,000 unit. To, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah if I'd have known that, yeah, there you go. I hadn't thought of that one. I'll be there. Huh. You know, driving up here, I, wondered, I was wondering, it just sounded kind of odd to me. Well, I kind of had an eye. I, I didn't know what was going on, but I thought, you know, this just don't quite sound right. Something, you know. <laughs> That's it. Now, now, Speedy's probably going to be upset. Yeah, yeah, they missed out on a, on a big rate. Darrell, what's the other 500 I got to get? Yeah, so we're shooting for five million next, so mm -hmm. you're going to have to step uh, up. One a day for 60 days ain't going to ain't, ain't going to cut that. Out. No. Yeah. No, I've always had good luck. I mean, I can't argue about that. I can remember one time I bought a fuel pump for a 6.2, had a little problem, gentleman come down the house, fixed it. Yep. I don't even remember what it was, it didn't mount much, yeah. I didn't even have to take it back off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hello there, young man, how you doing? I, I, could, I couldn't resist the uh, opportunity. Yeah, I got all my balloons. I knew something was up, I kept thinking, why would he not get that? <laughs> just, that bugged me all the way up here. I just thought, I wonder what's going on. And then I walked in the door and I, I seen them first, and then I knew something was up. When you first got them boil a church, oh, I bought one of them, put them on, and you'd have to, you'd have to lock the door because the guy's going to come back and hug you. I mean, they were really, really good compared yeah. to what they had. Oh, took old, probably, well, that VT50 probably came off of it. Too. Where that went went on, yeah. Yeah, you had VT fifties, T fifties, and they weren't no. they weren't very good. You put this on that, man said, Boy, this is woke it up, old. isn't it? <laughs> man, yeah. Well I'll tell you what, when uh, when we knew what the number was and knew you were coming in, I, I told Kurt, I said, couldn't happen to a better guy. Uh, well, I don't know. I know <laughs> Well I do. <laughs> How long have I known you? Oh, probably since 73. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just had a little bitty building here. Well, well you're standing in it right now. Yeah, this was it. Yep. Went to that wall right there and uh, only to that spot. <laughs> Gizmo back there. And that was it. Yep. You didn't have all this other stuff hanging around in here, you know. So you didn't have very uh, hard time trying to find what you have. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I could walk around the corner because it was all in there on yeah. one shelf. And now you wonder <laughs> where did I put it? You gotta walk all around looking for it. <laughs> no. Well, I'm I'm glad it glad it was you. That's uh, what well, I can say. I don't know how I did that, but <laughs> you always been lucky. Well, I, I have. Yeah, I agree with that. I ain't no better than anybody else. I just did my thing. That's all. So. Uh, this is red, local legend, particularly yeah. in the Cummins, yeah, in the Cummins world. Self-proclaimed old man. We yeah. didn't kill him with the big surprise when he walked in the door. 
So he's gonna he's gonna go another day. Yeah, I do have a bad ticker, you know. Uh oh. How long have you been wrenching? Me been wrenching? Let's see. Actually, for a little bit of money, I started in 1961. But I've been working with these old Cummins in 64. And what was the engine? Where was the triple nickel or was the 903 or what were you working on in 64? Well, in 64, in the 60s, they come out with a, they called it a V8 265. That was the first one. It was about 785 cubic inch. If you had one that run 40,000 miles and had no problem, they'd give you another one. <laughs> they were very, very bad. And then the 903 had to come out in, so I was working in Virginia, so it had to be 60s, the last part of the 60s. Actually, a truck driver coming to come out there in Richmond and told us about it. He read about it in Magnum. We didn't know. It was an inline or a V8? No, a, V6. It's a, a 903 is a V8. V8. Now, the V8 265 had a 200, a V6. The 903 never had one, but the 903 got two miles better per gallon than the 855 did, like the old 335. But it cost more per mile to operate it because, you know, you buy injectors, you got to buy two more. All right. You buy pistons, you got to buy two yeah. more. Yeah. You know, burns, you got to have two more. So what was the the triple nickel? Wasn't that kind the of The triple nickel was a V8, but the mother to the, to the triple nickel was a 504. The mother to the 504 was a 470. The 470 had a V6, and the 504 had a V6, but the triple nickel didn't. They just saw two cylinders off, shortened the crank, and everything else was... Yep. They had a guy at the factory's arm got sore. <laughs> That's a hacksaw. Saw that <laughs> off. And uh, then they made that one V8. They put in a Nissan pickup. That is the we last one they made. I didn't work. We got I don't one. want to have one, Dad. We got one. They quit doing them. Yeah, what happened? I, seemingly a fine engine. It's been great. Was it mileage bad <sighs> or something? I think the maybe the Nissan clientele is not so in tune with the diesel propulsion. I, I don't know. But The only thing I can say about this, don't, don't go to the bank with it just yet. Oh, because no. you've got to make sure that well, uh, there's something in there to cover it. When I get home, first thing a wife does, she runs her hands through my pocket, so I won't have <laughs> She's shooting me. Well, you, Hey, why don't we give him a lanyard and he can put this around his neck when he goes home? Would you do that? <laughs> Say, here you are, honey. Don't put it out walking out. Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> I know you would. <laughs> There's more. There's more. Woo! Woo! Well, Red, thank you for your business. We hey. appreciate it. Well, I thank you guys for helping me out all the time. You know, you did good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Red, what size shirt do you wear? I don't know. I don't buy them. <laughs> Call your wife and find out what size right. shirt you wear. Okay, give him an easy one. What size hat does he wear? Because they're one size fits most. More Warner threw that in. Get boosted. Red's yeah, getting boosted. Good. Think oh, that might? It's Bert Warner. What's that? That looks like an M14. Oh, that's probably a 4LHR right there. Yeah, it looks like one. You think that'll fit? Yeah, that'll fit. Okay. Then we got Everything you. Everything fits. Got you a couple of hoodies. Ready for winter. Some gloves, some hats, and board warner. We're gonna put these all over Red's brand new truck. What, what did you say? Chucked part of a piston and it's still. Yeah, it, uh, it, the, yeah the piston messed up. They, it has a steel insert in top for the top two rings, and that's all casted in that aluminum. And that you could spin it around. I've never uh, seen one do that. Really? It's completely Why? I don't know. So we thought something went through here. If it did, it didn't bother it. That's good. We took it off and decided we ought to get it checked just yep. in case. Because I know if this gets out of balance, that's... It, that's ain't, it ain't long for the world. Yep. And see, there's another thing. Years ago, they did not check the balances on this, except for Val. He was the first one that yep. started doing that. He sure did. I think even Cummins in the machine shop at first sent him up here for him to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy what uh, what is that. was the life of these things. Yeah. The balancing was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he got into the he did the right thing, I gotta say that point. 
you know, he lucked out pretty good. Alright, that's red. That's the 500,000 turbocharger. We're glad it happened to red. Couldn't have happened to a better person. We'll see you back when we hit 5 million. Thanks for watching. 5 million. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get that. But just sell me the 5 million first before I leave. Just cut me a P.O. And then we'll get to one. <laughs> send, send me a P.O. Well, for four and a half million of them, yeah. <laughs> do I have to uh, uh, take all of them? You know, we can we can put you on a scheduled delivery.